Hey, this is Vu, and today I wanted to take a look at the topic of roles in CS. And everyone says you need to have a role and you really should specialize, but I'm not sure I agree with that. I want to take a look at a couple of games here from a couple of players that will show you what can go wrong if you try to specialize too much too early. But first I want to talk about our sponsor. NordVPN is a VPN that allows you to do many things that benefit you inside and outside of the game. When it comes to CS, a VPN can allow you to deal with routing issues easily. Personally, I used to have a problem with many servers in which I would have 150 plus ping to servers I typically should get 50 to 60. Using a VPN, I was able to easily resolve this problem. A VPN can also allow you to connect to the far superior European matchmaking server so you can avoid the dreaded NAMM. Outside of the game, NordVPN is great to use to unlock different regions of Netflix or just in general to protect your data while in public. NordVPN has extremely fast servers in 59 different countries with 24-7 customer support, no data logging, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Check it out with the link in the description, nordvpn.com slash vu. Before we get into the analysis, I will say that the three roles I'm thinking about more specifically are Entry Fragger, Lurker, and Support, which are very fluid. When you look at IGL and Opper, those are a little bit more static, where you don't have multiple Oppers unless you're playing matchmaking. Anyways, if we look at the pro scene, I want to take a look at Astralis versus Na'Vi here to show you what this looks like in pro games where roles will be the most defined and the most important. So here we'll have Astralis going for a set strat at the beginning of the round, and you're going to be expecting Dupree and Glaive to be the first two players out a lot of the time. Dupree, typically the entry fragger, and Glaive would be in that entry frag duo with him more often than not. Zipnix is going to be more supportive, and Device, despite having enough to buy an off, went for an AK and full utility because they had a plan in this round. And the plan is to take middle control here. So Zipnix is going to throw some supporting util. Glaive and Dupree are going to be first up, tossing some flashes and pushing through. And Device will be there for support as well. Now you'll notice Dupree goes out first and they do actually adhere to their roles fairly effectively in the beginning portion of this round because this is what they could plan for very early on and use their utility correctly. However, once you get into the mid round, especially if people die, but you'll note people didn't die in this round for Astralis and they're still going to adjust because they need to remain fluid based on the amount of utility they have and who they have it on. Here they've got Dupree and Zipnix with utility to throw to support and that means you're going to have Device throwing some utility as well with Glaive and Magisk, the players with very little utility between them, leading into the bomb site and just making sure they trade off of each other despite the fact that again Dupree is typically known as their entry fragger you've got him leading in fourth and planting the bomb so they're not really static on those rolls they're fluid with it to make sure that they adjust things to what is important and what will win them the round they will stick to it when they can but if it's not realistic they won't try and if we take a look at this round here from Na'Vi on the other side, you're going to see Simple throwing some supporting utility for his teammates here to allow them to entry out. And what you're going to notice is that regardless of where Simple is in the push, he's still carrying uh, pretty much every time. He's still a carry. So the biggest problem I have with roles are that people learn of roles and they try to pick one as quickly as possible and specialize very early on. The reality is that almost any level of matchmaking or pug, you really just need to be doing what your team needs in a specific round and not specializing in a role because you're only going to hurt yourself trying to make it happen way too often. So if we look at this player here, Doomskull, who is LE and face at three, he's going to be trying to play a more of a supportive role. He doesn't say this specifically, however, that's what you can see happening. We'll show you an entry one a little bit later, but for the supportive role, that's a good smoke to throw. Tosses a flash. He probably didn't want to delay there for the flash, but it's all right anyways. He gets to the push here, and he's actually going to do a good job. He jumps out. He tries to support his team. Of course, the aim there was not the greatest. Definitely could have done a little bit better there, but he realizes his team needs some help, and he doesn't try and say, I'm a support player. I need 
to do X, Y, or Z. He just plays to support the team. That's what he wants to be doing, but the problem is that doesn't happen every round. Now you should understand, I'm not saying that roles aren't important and you should never have them. It's just that roles are primarily important when you're going for executes, when your team is actually having a set strat where there are set roles where someone has to go in first and someone has to throw utility. That's when roles are really important. When you're in a normal face it game or just a matchmaking game or whatever, you want to be really fluid because you're going to end up in a ton of odd situations where you can't just say, I'm a support player, so I'm going to play this spot out like a support player. You want to play the spot out like a good player instead. So we've got Doomskull here moving his way into Palace, and hey, that's a cool spot. I might have seen that somewhere before. What he's going to do is he's going to try and he's going to try and be supportive from Palace and Palace isn't a support area really. Support areas are areas where you can use your utility to set up your teammates, but in a spot like Palace, no real utility you can use is going to get anything positive done for your teammates. Usually, if you play with someone that knows how to lurk, he's just going to use that to play off of his teammates. His teammates generate pressure and he goes from there. Instead, Doomskull used his full clip of utility to not have a single useful piece of utility thrown and he's just going to end up dying at the end of the round anyways without getting anything done. All right, so we saw a round there that was pretty indicative of the problem with specializing in roles and we'll see a round here which is looking way too similar. Uh, this is <laughs> This is looking far too similar to the last one. Surely it can't happen again. No, it can. No, no, it can. It is going to happen exactly the same as the previous round, except this time his teammate gets thrown under the bus too. This is the problem with trying too hard at the very least, if he's not supporting here, he well, he, first of all, he's anti-supporting, but he's trying too hard to live up to not having any utility left over when he dies, which means he's forcing himself to use utility in scenarios that are just not good scenarios to use utility. You know, someone that's a lurker understands that this is a great place to try and catch your opponents off guard by allowing your mid players or your B player or your ramp player to make some level of contact. And then you go out off of that because Palace is not a very advantageous angle to move out from. There's only one place you could be coming from. There's a ton of different angles your opponents can be peeking you from and they could be posted with an off. So you allow your opponents to make the initial contact and you become a lurker from that position a lot of the time or you're a trade fragger if you're playing, you know, especially in low number scenarios. You're not a support player when you're coming out of Palace. Now, I'm not saying at the end of the day, if someone asks you how you typically play the game, you can't classify yourself somehow, but I don't want people defining themselves by the roles that they play. You need to be able to move fluidly like water, my friends, between multiple different play styles. And dude here is simply far too aggressive. The peek on the player window there shouldn't have been done. He should be losing that the majority of the time. Following that, it's, it's almost like he's got an allergy to throwing utility. In fact, if you combined him and Doomskull, the average of them likely would be someone that uses a normal amount of utility because dude here, he's got one kill. He's going to get another kill here as well. And he's got a decent idea that at least two more people are A here. In fact, I think he knows all three of these players are A at this moment, and this is where he should he should be thinking about how he can use his utility to get his teammates into B where they should be going here. He shouldn't be looking for more kills. He should be looking to secure the round win by slowing it down a little bit and using that utility in the clip. However, instead, he's just going to hunt for more kills aimlessly, hoping that if he kills more players, he will win more rounds. However, unfortunately, by not using his utility, he gave his opponents a little bit of extra time to rotate over. His teammates were put in a much weaker position, and he really kind of just shot himself in the foot.
Now, the idea here isn't that roles are non-existent, and it's not that roles are not somewhat important. However, they're not really all that relevant for the vast majority of rounds you're going to be in, in pugs and in matchmaking. If you're going for an execute, if you're going for a strat, and you're actually playing something as a team, then you can try and put yourself in the roles that make sense. If someone needs to throw a utility and you like to play a little bit more supportive, then you can say, I'll throw the utility what it doesn't mean is that you should try to use that role to dictate how you play out specific scenarios once you're in them if it wasn't something you decided beforehand if you're palace lurking and you want to play a supportive style you don't you play a more lurk heavy style if your team already has someone with utility and you've just gotten ak and armor then you play a more entry fraggy style you need to be able to flow through the different roles not only to have the best ability to win games in matchmaking and in pugs but also so that you can understand which roles you're strong at and which roles you're poor at as well as which scenarios it's important for you to do certain things in even in pro games on top level pro teams they're not going to stick very heavily to these ideas of roles on you know default rounds the default positioning might be impacted by the way players like playing but once they get into a round everyone is capable of fulfilling every single role it's just in specific scenarios they make sure that they have their players in their designated positions this is something you should keep in mind try to play like that don't try to force yourself into roles when it's completely unnecessary. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped. Wow, that was a really well-made video. I'm gonna go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment to support the content.